So now comes the big day where we are pressing this button and we'll see the white balance and everything is falling back to what we had before. And now I'm pressing preset number two where we'll see that it's reinstating the values that I had. So the upper button up here is going to give us um, ND filter. This is one fourth, then we have one sixteenth and then one sixty four. So those ND filters motorized as they are in this camera are now changed around. With RCP Pro, you can shade your Canon PTC cameras in the same way you would shade any broadcast camera. And the RCP unit fits into existing OB trucks and master control rooms, so it's really easy to mount it. RCP Pro and the Colorfly will also allow you to build a professional separation between control of iris and color on the one side and pan tilt and zoom positions on the other side. However, even the RCP Pro can be used to adjust pan and tilt if it's necessary. Control works perfectly synchronous between these units. The Blue Pill platform allows you to store and recall presets for color settings, which is very useful on the RCP for storing what is often known as scene files. The RCP Pro also gives you the most innovative RCP joystick in the business for control of iris and pedestal, while the Colorfly is perfect for multi-camera control, where you want direct access to iris on multiple cameras. Very often, the heroes in our videos would be the RCP Pro, but I'm just gonna set it aside a little bit and focus on the Colorfly at first. This is a new product in the spring of 22, and we are really excited about the upgrades we have put into this. Well, it's only new in the sense that we have updated the design of the unit to make it even more flexible and cool for camera control, but also audio and lighting and a lot of other applications. And why is that? Because these are universal controllers, okay? But today, you'll see how Colorfly is amazing in terms of controlling multiple cameras for the settings you need if you wanna shade and match them all up together. So we have a camera selector on these buttons. We even have camera banks. So if I had multiple cameras added, we could page through them. And I think we'll do that a little later in the video. But let's first look at the basic structure of the controller. Now we have one camera added and right here, you have your fader for the iris. So you see the fader is moving along here. It is uh, stepping a little bit because we are currently adjusting the um, f-stops in the camera. I believe the Canon camera has two ways you can control the iris. There's like an abstract parameter, which is a number between zero and 200 or something like that. And then we also have the f-stops, which is like a, sp a specific value list. Uh, we can do both. This button would usually be connected to a video router or auxiliary on your video switcher. Why? Because um, in front of you, you would have a monitor with the camera you're shading. So you just uh, press this button and it will pop up on the monitor in front of you. So that's also a feature you'll set up, but we'll not cover that in this video. We have another two buttons, which in this case is assigned to the um, auto exposure gamma level or gamma limit. And this one is ND filters. Over here, we have a menu section. So uh, watch what is happening on these keys up here, or these knobs up here. We have the home menu, we have exposure menu, we have the white balance, black, focus. If I press this one, I have a shift level that I'm enabling, and then I have additional menu options, which is different modes, presets, and various. Now, that's the basic way the Colorfly is laid out with this menu up here. We have presets for color settings down here, and we can also page uh, forth and back. The presets are stored like a robotic camera, so if I want the current color setting stored, I just press and hold this one. It's lighting up uh, green just shortly, and that means it's stored. And then I can change settings and recall them later. Up here we have pedestal, so typically each channel on the multi-camera controller is pedestal, iris, and then some settings that can be unique for the cameras, especially the two upper buttons, while the lower button will usually be routing it to your preview screen. Then we have a lock button down here that is going to lock up the whole controller completely. I can touch anything except that one and it won't react. So I'm just going back here by opening up the controller once again. Let's try to adjust the camera. You see the output of the PTC camera here is pointed to a little um, setup uh, in our studio. 
And I now want to go to the home screen and explore what we have here. We have the shooting menu, which is set to manual mode, but you could set it to full auto. But let's keep it in manual because we want to adjust settings and have fun with that today. So we have the iris right here. And if I'm adjusting it on the fader, you can also see how it's following along up here. And you also see the effect on the image of the camera. So this is fully open. This is as closed as it gets. And that's F11 right here. Now, um, that gives me a chance to show you the automatic exposure gamma limit right here. I think so, at least. Uh, or maybe not, because since I'm in manual mode, it may not affect it. Okay, so it does. So um, the auto exposure gamma limit is currently at 22 dB. And you see how this two-way button allows me to adjust the value. So you see it in the display right there in this little tile. And as I'm pressing the lower edge, I'm decreasing the value. If I'm pressing the upper edge, I'm increasing. I can also press and hold, and you'll see the value is decreasing automatically until I release the button. Pretty neat. Now, um, let's bring some light into the camera and maybe gain it up a little bit because we could have fun with the ND filter. So the upper button up here is going to give us um, ND filter. This is 1 fourth, then we have 1 16th, and then 1 64. So those ND filters, motorized as they are in this camera, are now changed around from these buttons. Over here, white balance settings. Obviously, we have white balance mode set to manual. That means we can shade the image by turning the red knob and also the blue knob. So those are the classic dimensions, red and blue gain for a manual white balance adjustments. But we also have a bank here with um, executing uh, auto white balance. So we can press and hold this button to um, to execute for white balance bank number A and we have B. Then we have daylight. We have uh, tungsten uh, white balance modes. Those are typical. You find them in so many cameras. They have standard presets for your white balance. And finally, we have like Kelvin where we can really uh, go nuts and change the degrees in Kelvin. Uh, all the time, I believe the red and blue gain here is actually offsetting the, the white balance, whatever mode you have. So uh, by pressing and holding as I just did, I am resetting those two to zeros to have the um, neutral starting point for my white balance mode here. But those will always adjust the um, or offset the white balance of the camera. So exactly how it works really depends on the Canon camera. What we do is faithfully implement the parameters the camera allows us through its API. These cameras, new cameras from Canon, are running on the XC protocol, which is a really cool protocol to work with. It's uh, super easy and it has been really flawless so far. So we have enjoyed that a lot, our development team. Yeah, um, looking here into the black uh, menu, we have sharpness level, black gamma level, black gamma point, black gamma range. We have um, focus mode, we have focus tracking, uh, autofocus speed. Over here, we have shutter mode. Let's try that um, for a moment. So uh, we can set that between uh, a few modes here. I am not entirely sure what each of these means. We have clear scan, we have slow, we have speed. Um, so exactly what that means, I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, but you will know because if you're watching this video because you own that camera, I'm sure that you have an exact idea about where all these settings belong. You, you'll find most of them or all of them in the web interface of the Canon camera. Let's explore the presets a little bit. I think that could be fun. So let's go back to the white balance uh, menu here. So we have these, uh, this white balance in Kelvin. And um, we already changed that around, right? Since we um, stored the first preset here. So now I'm going to store that on preset number two. Just press and hold. Okay, so now comes the big day where we are pressing this button and we'll see the white balance and everything is falling back to what we had before. And now I'm pressing preset number two where we'll see that it's reinstating the values that I had just stored as I was adjusting the knobs here. So that's how color presets work. If there are parameters in your camera, in your Canon camera or any camera that you want to include in a preset, it's actually customizable. So in Reactor, the software that runs this, it's possible to add or remove parameters in the camera to include in the presets. But changing which parameters is a part of your configuration is not for this video. It's a semi-advanced topic. We would love to cover it. We'll do that in another video. But in this one, we'll just want to highlight that it's possible because basically it's infinite what you can do in Reactor. Let's focus on the main road. 
the default configuration we have provided. We have spent hours and hours on setting this up for you, for you to have a really good default. At this point, I would love to add some more cameras to the Colorfly. After all, this video is a multi-camera controller presentation, and we have only one camera, so it's not so much multi at this point. Therefore, I want to go in here and add cameras, which are not the Canon camera, and um, it could, for instance, be a nice little Dreamchip camera. Dreamchip makes some cool uh, cameras, which are POV cameras, tiny cameras. And one of them, which is uh, really uh, nice, a new product at this point in the spring of 22, we have Atom 1 Mini Zoom. And Atom 1 Mini Zoom has not only Zoom, it also has iris control, and that would work well for this one. So I'm just going to add that. Um, it's added as a device in Reactor, and you see it's missing its IP address. Now, I have a solution for that, actually. So um, I'm just going to add a few more so that we have some volume to work with here. And therefore, I am picking multiple of these. Every time I pick one, you see that it's added under the category or the device core called Dreamchip Cameras right here. And you also see on the controller, you find these cameras listed on the camera selector. Now, if you would like to change the title of these, which are all Atom 1 Min, then you would go here and maybe call it Atom 1, and the second one could be Atom 2. Now notice what happens in the displays. Guess what? We are updating the labels dynamically. So you have a very clear understanding on what you get when you press these buttons. And now also, because I have more than four cameras, it gives me a chance to show you the bank function. So when I press the side of this one, you see that I go to camera five and six, and I could also provide numbers for those. So let's just do that, at least one of them. So it's in place right now. Was it not? If I, oh, I did not get to change that one. Let's try once again, and there we go. So now it's also changed. There is one thing I need to do for this to work, and that is to assign a profile for how Master Black and Iris are managed. So each of these channels need a profile right here. So I'll just go do that real quick for these Dreamchip cameras. That is a single choice I should take, and that is the Dreamchip Atom 1 Mini Iris and Master Black controls. So that is selected right now, and it already had a response on the faders, as you could see. Now, if I go back to the first page, there you can see the faders are responding to my paging forth and back, which is exactly as we wanted. Now, there is um, still missing IP addresses, and if I had the cameras, I would set it up. But actually, we have a feature called simulation. That's essentially a fake it mode. And with fake it mode, it's more than just playing. It's... Um, potentially your way of evaluating a camera. You could add a camera before you own it and still play around with how your Skyhawk controller will respond to it. And um, that's, that's a useful feature in many ways. And for this demonstration, it's useful because it allows me to actually move these faders around and, and put in some values that's only stored inside of the memory of, of the controller here. So as I've done this, you can see I'm moving between these banks and the faders are adjusting accordingly as I'm going forth and back. Isn't that cool? Hi. There is one thing that I also want to do here. I want to replicate the Canon camera. So this is nice because if I go to my device collection, the existingly added cameras, I could add the Canon camera once again. Now you see this is becoming camera number seven. So it's sitting right here, and it's adjusting the same camera I had on the front page. But my point was that I wanted the camera cam Canon camera to always be on the same button. So what I do is I drag it over here. Notice what happens. It's changing position so that as I'm going between the first and the second page, the Canon camera is always selectable on the same button. Now we need to look at the RCP Pro. So we set the Colorfly a little bit aside and then we put the RCP Pro in the center stage here. It's completely unconfigured. So one of the things we'll do is to show you how easy it is to set this one up. The RCP Pro has just like Colorfly an IP address and it's shown in the display. So it's really clear to us what we need to do. Let's open up a new tab on the web browser here and type in the IP address of the RCP Pro. We see this. And I don't need help, but maybe you do. So you should feel free to take a tour of Reactor. That's a really cool little experience. And currently it's just showing the boot screen of RCP Pro. That means showing the IP address in this display and blinking the tally LED 
green. Thank you. Now I'm changing over to what you will probably also choose, namely the RCP generic PTC control. And with that configuration, it means that it's ready to receive cameras. So now I want to add the Canon camera. So I'll press the add button here and some devices will announce themselves through network discovery. Other times you will have to add them manually. So let's show how the manual adding processes, we can still filter on the model we want. So we find the CIN 500 selected. And since we selected it in this way, we also need to supply an IP address. So we'll just click here and then scroll down to IP, type in the known IP address of the device like that, press save and it's connected. So basically now we have added the Canon camera as we wanted. So the camera selector on the RCP Pro, because in fact it can also work multi-camera control on a number of cameras. It's just more typical that an RCP form factor device will control one camera at a time. So holding down shift, you have a camera selector on the top. We press that button and voila, we now have the CIN 500 controlled right here. And you'll see as I'm moving the handle here, hey, <clears throat> the fader is moving along as well because <clears throat> the fader is of course synchronous as I am sending commands to the iris in the camera from the RCP joystick. And this one is reading values back from the camera as well. So what are we having right here? One and two devices all connected or both connected to the same camera, pulling values out all the time, which means we have synchronicity between these two devices. So that's a basic thing. I could go through these menus and you'll see up here in the top, you have wonderful displays that will show you all these nice settings. There's even more settings on the RCP. So we have brought out a few more of the parameters onto the knobs up here for your convenience. There will even sometimes be a shift key that gives you access to even more under the hood if you press that one down. So uh, this is how the RCP Pro works. Uh, but same principle, having a home screen with eight different options, having exposure with eight different options on these knobs, etc. And then watch out for the shift key that sometimes turns its color into a greenish or uh, bluish color here. That means that you have additional things that you can adjust in here. We already covered many of those. And um, if you look at the screen in this video, you will get an idea about what you can do. You can even go into the device core in Reactor and press the manual tab and you'll see a PDF file with a an insane amount of parameters that you can expect to control in your Canon series uh, controllers, um, or sorry, cameras. So there are f uh, five different models, CRN series, PTC cameras, and also the EOS series, which can be assigned and controlled from these two controllers. At the end of this video, let me show you something really cool, which is sort of technical, but before that, I also want to highlight what I claimed earlier that you can actually adjust pan and tilt on the RCP. So that's like an emergency pan and tilt operation. It happens on this joystick, but it's actually pretty good. So you see, as I'm pressing the edge of this joystick, I'm able to pan the camera to the sides. Or if I press the top edge, I am tilting. And if I'm pressing in the corner, you actually do both. Now, if I want to adjust the speed, there will be speed available to me in the menus. So I'm able to set the, the pen at the joystick speed of the camera. I could set it to uh, like one if I just want to nudge it a little bit. So as I'm pressing this one, it's going really slowly. But uh, it's also so that if I press it hard, it's actually motion sensitive. So now I'm pressing it a little bit harder. You'll see it's increasing the speed and now I'm releasing it a little bit. So that is actually sensitivity to the pressure on the joystick pad here. So um, let's just do that down here. And now I'm pressing harder. So you can see it's increasing its speed. And now to the side, let, let me just press lightly. Once again, I'm pressing it lightly. And now I'm pressing it harder. So it's increasing the speed. So this is even possible with this joystick. It's not fully binary. It's actually pressure sensitive. Cool stuff. This will help an RCP operator to assist the cameraman. But remember, this whole setup is focused on the separation we discussed in the beginning. You want one to concern himself with the color and the, uh, the image, while another one, the cameraman, would be concerned with the framing. And that's the separation this setup allows. It means you could add a PTC controller with a real joystick, and he would be in charge of that. Sometimes you have devices that only support a single so-called client. And a client for a camera like this one would be the device that connects to the camera. 
So there are all sorts of devices in broadcast, but many devices will allow only a single connection to it. Consider it solved. We actually can get around that with Skahoy technology. So even though the Canon cameras doesn't need it, because um, I still want to show you how it works. This controller, the RCP Pro and the Colorfly, and if I had a PC controller, they could all be connected to the camera at the same time. It wouldn't have any issue with that at all. But we can also make one of these a host, and the others would be guests that would work with the camera through the host. So let me show you how that works. It may not look to be any different to you, but if you uh, get what I'm, I mean here, it actually is pretty cool because it means Skahoy technology will allow these multi-master workflows even with devices that are only made for a single client connection. The RCP Pro is set up in Reactor right here, and here we have the Colorfly. So what I want to do is to let the Colorfly be the master, okay? So we're assuming that the Colorfly will have connections to a ton of cameras, including DreamChip cameras and the CIN500. So what I do now on the RCP Pro is I go into the device core of the, C, uh, the Canon uh, camera here, and then I change the address from local to the IP address of the Colorfly. So the Colorfly's IP address is 11211. So if I go back here, I can now type in the IP address of my Colorfly and say, I want my device call to run on this one. So instead of Reactor inside of the RCP Pro trying to do this itself, it is now going to this IP address to have device communication happening. And currently it says the call is disconnected. So it also means that it's blinking red. It looks like the RCP is not working. So let's go over to the Colorfly because what I need to do here is to install a package on the Colorfly called a device connector. So if I scroll down in the list of packages, you find device core connector right here. If I install that one, let's just do that. Now watch what is happening as I'm installing. It's okay now. And we'll see in a moment, right there, the RCP Pro now has connection to the Canon camera once again. And as I'm moving the joystick, we'll also see that it's responding by moving the fader over here. And to kind of see that this is in fact so, then if we go to the home screen and we edit this one by disabling this particular device, you'll see they are also blanking out both of them at the same time. So that's proof basically that the device communication is going through the Colorfly to the camera also for the RCP Pro. That's it. I want to invite you to follow us on social media. If you have not already done so, please subscribe on our YouTube channel because we have a lot of content that we are sharing on a regular basis. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our sales team and our support team. They would love to answer them for you.